Okay, so this is gonna be the bread recipe. You make nice Italian breads. I'm gonna make one Italian bread and make some small Chicago rolls for a friend of mine who wants some Chicago rolls, but we'll do it all with the same recipe. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some warm water, about 115 degrees, and you want a cup and a half of warm water. Say between 100, 115 degrees, and just so the yeast can activate. I'm using, I'm putting in a KitchenAid uh, mixing bowl because that's what I'm going to wind up using anyway. Here we're just going to bloom the yeast. So we're going to take one teaspoon of active dry yeast and put it in there. And we're going to whisk that around. Whisk it around just to mix. And we're going to wait for that bloom. So I'll be back in a minute or two once it blooms. Now it should take about five minutes. Now if you can see, see what's happening. You can see it like exploding up on top. That's why they call it blooming because it looks like it's blooming. It's popping up. So that means the yeast is good. That means the yeast is active and um, it's now feeding and eating and it's uh, letting out gas as it does that. So that's good. So we can now continue on with our, uh, if you let this keep on going, if you walked away and you came back, it would look like you have a bowl full of beer. There'd be a big head on this water if I just kept it going like this, but I can see it's already activated. So we can go with it now. So from here, I'm gonna pull out a KitchenAid mixer and we're gonna add the flour. Okay, but before we put in the KitchenAid mixer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the flour and we're gonna add it to the water. Just like that. So, oh, I'm sorry, and we have three and a half cups of flour. That's three and a half cups, unpacked cups of flour. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a fork and I'm gonna just incorporate this flour and water mixture together until it's combined. I'm not gonna make a bowl of dough because we're gonna hydrate the dough, hydrate the flour, let the flour absorb evenly. So here we go. See, we mix it like this. This looks pretty good. Looks like we got all of the flour and water mixed like this. And now we are gonna let it sit just like this. Looks a little stringy and hairy. Okay, so we're gonna let it sit like this to hydrate for 20 minutes, okay? And after 20 minutes, we will then add some salt and throw it into the, uh, put it in the KitchenAid and start mixing it. Okay, so 20 minutes are up. It's hydrated, I guess. The next step here is now we're gonna add salt. You don't wanna add the salt early because the salt will kill the yeast. So we want the yeast to do some of its job to get healthy. And now we are going to, we are going to um, knead this dough. We're gonna add three teaspoons, three teaspoons of yeast. Uh, I'm sorry, three teaspoons of kosher salt. So a nice, let's cut one, two, three. Okay, and now we're just gonna need this for about 10 minutes. And we'll see what it looks like at that point in time. Should come together, should get elastic-y. Clean the sides of the bowl. The sides of the bowl should be nice and clean by the time we're finished. So 10 minutes and we will see what it feels like. This is on a low speed, it's on stir right now. So I'm just gonna let it go for a little bit and stir and until the dough comes together and starts looking like a nice thing of dough. So that's that point. Okay, so about two minutes have gone by. You see how it's starting to clean off the edge of the bowl? Sticking a little bit at the bottom, that's okay. I'm gonna turn this up one notch. And let it beat it around a little bit. And we'll keep on going for the rest of the time. I'll be back at the end of 10 minutes. 
Now you see how nice it's uh, spinning around. It's not like puddling or sticking all to the bottom. If it was a little soft and sticking to the bottom and not making a nice dough that's banging around like that on the dough hook, I would add a little bit of flour, maybe a teaspoon of flour, a tablespoon of flour. Let it incorporate. See if it starts looking like this. Um, and as long as it's not all sticking on the bottom and it's moving around like a ball, you'll be good. And just but don't over flour it. Just enough, just enough flour to make it not stick all around. Okay, we're winding down on our timer. It'll be any moment now for our 10-minute timer to go off. And then we'll test the dough to see. And there's my timer going off right now. So now we're going to test the dough to see if it's uh, Alexa, stop. Now, one, a couple of ways of testing the dough. Want it to sp Alexa, stop. You give it a push, if it pushes back, that doesn't look like it's pushing back very much for me. So, but the other way of testing it, really the good way of testing it is. Um, take it down all oh, this dough hook like this. Off the dough hook. You grab a bunch of dough and you pull it out and see if you can make a window with it that you can see through. See, this is still pulling apart a little too much. So I think, so we're trying to just spread a little piece of dough up, spread it out, spread it out. So to make a, and actually that's not so bad. See, it is stretching. See, it stretches there. I have a little window here. This window breaks, but maybe I'll let this go just maybe a couple minutes longer. But I mean, I can't stretch it because it's stretching. And it's not falling apart as it stretches, which means the gluten is starting to uh, form. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put it in maybe for another couple of minutes and then I'll take it out and we'll form it. Okay. Okay. So it went a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'm just going to work it a little bit on the counter just to make it blow it up a little bit so it have a ball. So it's off the hook. It is here out of the machine. Hello. Out of the machine, so I'm just gonna take it out here, put it on the counter, and all I'm going to do, oops, sorry. All I'm gonna do now is just knead it just a little bit, right? And I knead it, and then just pick it up, turn it in, pick it up, turn it back, roll it. That's all I'm doing, okay? Just kneading it. Feels nice, nice and smooth. If you look at it, look at that. That looks very nice. See, it bounces back. It doesn't leave a divot in it. Pushes back at me. That means the gluten's good. I'm gonna put that in a uh, Tupperware. Okay. I have this long Tupperware, long square. I'm gonna oil it a little bit on the inside. So here we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil. Hands. Take the dough, drop it in, cover it up, put it in the cool place. Forty-five minutes. Doubles in size, and that's it for now. Okay, well it's been a little longer than forty-five minutes, uh, forty minutes, because it took a little longer for the dough to double in size, but it's about doubled in size now. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of flour. We take a little bit of flour. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour here. Okay. We're going to dump the dough out. Help it out if it won't come out on its own. Okay. Here it comes. Okay. Here's the dough. Now you see, now it doesn't pop back. You see that? That's what we want. It's full of air now. So what we're going to do is just flatten it out just a little bit gently. Flatten it out like this. Okay. I'm going to pull one end to the middle. I'm going to pull the other end to the middle, just like that. We're going to pull the other end to the middle. We're going to pull the other end to the middle. We're going to turn it over and put it back in. Seams down. Okay. Seam side down. If you can do that. Okay. You can use. You don't have to use what I'm using, but so now it's folded, folded, folded back in. Seam side down. We're going to cover this back up. Let it double in size. We're going to take about an hour now. Okay, so I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to let it double in size. Take about an hour. Okay, we're back. The dough has doubled in size. It's been an hour. So 
we are now going to shape our dough. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of flour down on the work surface. Now I use bread flour. The recipe actually calls for uh, all-purpose flour, not bread flour. But I didn't have any all-purpose flour. All I had was bread flour. So, so I'm flouring my work surface a little bit. I'm going to get this out of here. Free it from the edges, turn it upside down, and out it goes. So there it is. Nice, and it's really, really risen now, so it's very nice. So now I'm going to divide this into, this would be, this amount of dough here will make three baguettes, probably two Italian breads. So I'm going to divide this in half, make one Italian bread, I'm going to make some small Chicago rolls, because uh, a friend of mine wants to know how to make Chicago rolls. So we're going to do this. So, we're going to divide the dough in half. I think half is about, yeah, half should make a good Italian bread. Okay, so I'm going to divide the dough in half, just like that, okay? We'll make the Italian bread here, we're going to make the rolls here. So let's just put that there. And there. So here's my Italian bread. So what we're going to do is, let me see if we can see fine. Yes, okay, good. We're going to flatten it out gently, like this. Okay, so this is about six by four, right? About that. I'm going to take the outside, pull it to the center like that. I'm going to take my heel on my hand and just push down on that seam so it sort of makes that seam meld in like that. Take the other side, bring that to the middle too. Okay, and again, I'm going to push it in the middle like that. Okay. Then we take this outside, bring it all the way to the outside, and now we're going to take the heel of our hand and seal it there. Okay? So now it's sealed there. If you can see, there. So I sort of sealed it with the palm of my hand. So now I have this. Not quite the size of an Italian bread, but we're going to roll from the middle to the out, middle to the outside, middle to the outside, just like that. Now that's a decent size Italian bread right there. It depends on the size of your oven because you're not going to get anything much bigger than that in your oven. So I take this and I put it here on my cloth. Now, now you might not, you're not going to have this cloth, but you can take a towel, a cotton towel, put lots of flour on it. This has lots of flour on it. And put it here. And then what you're going to do is make a little, lift up one side there, lift up one side there. So you're making like a little couch for the uh, for the bread, okay? So for it to rise. So it, can't, it doesn't go out, it wants to go up, so it holds it in place. Then if I made another one, I'd put another one there, and I'd do that. If I made another one, I'd put another one there, and I'd do that, and I made another one, I'd put it like that. So that's what you would do. Now I'm gonna make some smaller rolls go alongside of it, but I'll do the same thing. Okay, so I'm not quite sure, I never made these rolls before, so we're gonna take, uh, Small amount like this. Again, we're going to flatten it. We're going to fold it, fold it, fold it over. And now we have like this. So a Chicago roll is only about this big. And it's nice and flat and round, just like that. That's a Chicago roll. When it rises, hopefully, hopefully it's going to rise. So I'm going to place a seam side down there. And that would be one. Do another one. Okay, again, flatten it out to the middle, to the middle, to the end. Now I'm going like this, because it's a little too big now, so I'm going to make this one smaller. So I'm thinking just like that would be my nice Chicago. That looks a little weird because the seam is all moved around, but that's okay. So I'm going to put that one there. And, uh, okay, let's make... Uh, let's make another bread. Let's make another bread. So I'm going to get a little bit more flour. Two rolls should be fine, I think. Flatten that out a little bit like that to the center. To the center. This would be more like a baguette. I mean, yeah, like a French baguette, not like an Italian bread. This will be much narrower. Okay? So then we're going to roll it and roll it. Roll it and roll it. There, and that's gonna be a, a baguette. Okay, come over to here. We're gonna pick up this point here, so we 
have it divided. Put this baguette down there and do that same thing there. And now we're gonna leave this to rise till it's about doubles in size. Uh, and that's gonna take, I don't know how long that's gonna take. Let me think. It's gonna take about an hour for it to double in size. Okay, we can cover it with a wet towel or cover it with some loose uh, plastic wrap just to keep the air from hardening the outside a little bit. And after an hour, we'll, I'll show you what we do next. Oh, right now, what we should also do before I forget, we're gonna set the oven to 475 degrees and I'm gonna put my pizza stone in there. Now, you might not have a pizza stone like I have a pizza stone. Okay, but I'll show you in a second. There's my pizza stone. I bought this for myself for Christmas two years ago. It's a humongous pizza stone. Okay, it fits on my entire shelf in the oven. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lower my shelf. <clears throat> this pizza stone weighs a ton, too. It's a nice, it's a beautiful stone. But whatever stone you have, I have a stone. I put it, by the way, not on the center, just below the center, because it's really hot, and it'll try and probably scorch the top of the bread. So you lower, make it lower, it's better. So the stone's in now. I'm gonna set my oven to 475 degrees, and we hit stop. Okay, so that's gonna go on at 475. So in the hour that um, this is rising, this gives this an hour to get to temperature and to stay at temperature. So we want a nice, even temperature in our oven. So, 475, our bread is, uh, our bread is ready, it's rising, and we'll be back in. All right, well, the next thing we're gonna do, I don't know if you have a pizza peel. If you have a pizza peel, that's great. Because what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take a little flour, I'm sorry, take a little flour, just sprinkle a little flour on your pizza peel, and just rub it all in. Some people use a fine ground cornmeal, that works too. You just put like some cornmeal on this plant thing and when we put the bread on here, it's gonna slide really easy into the oven. Now, if you do not have a pizza peel, you don't, which a lot of people don't have a pizza peel. What you gonna do, take a, take a sheet pan, turn it upside down, get some parchment paper, You get some parchment paper. You put the parchment paper, this is a small sheet. I'm not doing it with the parchment paper, I'm just giving you an idea. You put your parchment paper down here, and um, if you put a little, moisten this a little bit, the parchment paper like sticks, things it's so it doesn't peel up. Put your parchment paper here, and when we take our bread, we move it onto here, then when we go to the oven, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the entire parchment paper sheet with the bread on it onto the pizza stone. And that way, and then you'll take it out the same way. You pull the parchment paper out and you have it out. Okay, that's, that's what we're gonna do if you don't have a pizza peel. I have a pizza peel and that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, one last thing. When you put that pizza stone in, you get yourself a uh, cast iron skillet and put it on a shelf below it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some ice to that so we can add steam. I can't do that. We're going to add ice to that so we can add steam in the oven, which keeps the, lets the outside of the bread, lets the bread cook at a better speed without, so the top doesn't brown too quickly. So the skillet goes in. When we're ready to put the bread in, we're going to throw some ice cubes in the skillet, and that will cause the steam. Okay, so our hour is up, and our bread looks like it's about doubled in size. We got a little fatter, got a little bigger. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick them up one at a time and put them on my peel over here. Now what I do to pick them up is I have this thing, which I bought, of course, because I buy things. So it's a thing for picking up bread. Okay, but you can get a piece of cardboard and put tin foil on it that would do the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna flatten that out a little bit. I'm gonna lay my board right next to it, pick the cloth up and roll it onto the board. Now you see that rolled onto the board. So now 
you come over here and I take it and I roll it off the board just like that. Now my board is, if you remember my board is floured so it's not sticking. If the dough is very wet and sticky you might have a problem. Okay so now I'm going to try and get my two little rolls, my Chicago rolls here. One, two, got them there, good. I'm gonna lay them down right here. Excellent. Come back here. I'm gonna get the big guy. This is our dinner for tonight. And now him we lay it over just like that. So now we have our nice three, our, our, well now it's four. So now what I have to do is I have to use my lame, lame, L-A-M-E, it's French and A is A and E is E, so it's lame. And I'm gonna score my bread. Now you got, I found that you have to do this really fast and something really sharp. They say you can use a really sharp knife. I don't, I have sharp knives, but nothing sharp enough that's not gonna drag and pull on this. So these are, I bought this. The, the blades cost like maybe 10 cents. This holder uh, probably cost me like $50. So it's like $50 to do this. But if you had a regular straight edge razor, this is a double edge razor. If you have a single edge razor, you can do the same thing. So we're gonna do it at about, this would be like a 45 degree angle, so we're gonna do it like at a 30 degree angle. We're gonna score it, score it, score it like four times, really fast. So one, two, three, four, look, I can even do five, there's five. Same thing with this one. One, two, three, four. This, the little rolls, we just wanna do straight down the middle. And you wanna go relatively deep if you can, because not like all the way through, but you see how this is deep? Because when it, when it starts to rise, it's going to open up and allow this to expand and rise up. So, see how it slides on my board? That's very nice. Now, we're going to move over to the oven. Where's the oven? I don't even see it anymore. There it is. There's the oven. Okay. And I'm going to put these on my 475 degree. Let me check my temperature. Good. And I'm going to put these right on my board. So, can I go? All the way to the back, slide it. Once it touches, you slide it, taking and slide it, and it's in. Now, ice. We want to take about a cup of ice. I got a cup of ice. I'm going to throw it in that preheated pan that we put in there. There it is. And it's in, it's sizzling, we close the door. We're in for about 20 minutes to bake. That's all it's going to take at that temperature is 20 minutes. And we will check it in, say, about 10 or 15 and see how it's doing. Great. And there they are. And there. I'll open this up really quickly. See them in there? Very nice. That's a little close because they might wind up touching each other. Maybe I'd want them a little farther apart. But right now, we'll see what happens. If you have a spray bottle with some fresh water in it, a nice clean spray bottle, you don't want to do it with Windex or anything like that. Make sure it's just water. You can open up and just do that every so often. And that keeps the bread from browning too fast on the top and let it rise inside and get, get you a larger, thicker, nice, heartier loaf. Okay, it's about 15 minutes into this. They're looking really brown. They're looking really good. But what I do every few minutes, every couple of minutes, I have my spray bottle and I just spray inside. It sort of slows down the browning process and allows it to cook a little bit more. And um, so this just about done. Another three, four minutes we'll be taking this out. But as long as it's brown, it's good. If it starts getting black, take it out. We don't want it black. Brown's fine, but not black. Okay, thank you. All right, that's our 20 minute timer. And let's, Alexa, stop. Okay, so that's our 20 minute timer. Let's get this bread out of there. It looks good. I have my peel. I go in really fast like that. And I have it. And now. Okay. 
I'm gonna put it on my rack. It looks really good, doesn't it? Mmm, looks delicious. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so this is pretty much our bread, right? Bottom looks nice. Our rolls look good. Probably could have cooked less time on the rolls because they're smaller. But we cooked everything at the same time, 20 minutes, and this is our bread. Now, hopefully, when it starts crackling, I'll let you listen to that too. So, let me let it dry a little, let me let it rest a little bit, and then when it starts crackling, you can hear it. Okay, well, I don't hear it crackling, but you can hear it crackling. Hear this one. I'm not going to open them up because I'm going to eat them tonight. Listen. That's the bread.